what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through Or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs burst. myself recently. I suffer, you know, with PTSD. It just won't go away for a long time. I hope that you think twice about what you are doing to this nation's veterans who are willing to die to protect this nation. If the Army asked me to go again, to be deployed again, I would absolutely go. I may give out, but I never give up.
Olivet Church. I'm Morgan. We are a friendly church that welcomes all to worship and fellowship with us. Thank you for joining us virtually. We love you. We are a Bible-based church with outstanding preaching. We are widely known as the Thrill on the Hill, where families fellowship in Fayetteville. We strive to provide a worship experience where worshipers will have a life-changing experience. Our mission is to know Christ and to make him known. Join us for our Sunday virtual worship each Sunday at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Here are our upcoming events. Hope Delivers Free Food Giveaway will be November 18th from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Register online at theolivetchurch.org. If you or a loved one need food, please come out to the Olivet Church on November 18th. The Olivet Church Thanksgiving Basket Drive is coming up. Would you please make a monetary contribution to help families in need this holiday? Use Push Pray or select Thanksgiving Baskets. You can even mail a check to P.O. Box 143298, Fedville, Georgia 30214. Back up, Olivet. Protect yourself, your family, and your community. Free COVID-19 vaccines, Moderna, Pfizer, and the booster will be available Thursday, November 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Register online at lagrange.coresponse.org. Remember to use hashtag VaxUpOlivet. Welcome home, Olivet. In-person worship service will begin November 21st at 9.30 a.m. We will be streaming on facebook.com forward slash the Olivet Church and on our YouTube channel at the Olivet Church. Olivet, we will celebrate our 30th church anniversary on Sunday, November 21st at 9.30 a.m. This will be our very first in-person worship service. Our speaker will be our very own Dr. William Holmes Robinson. The anniversary love gift this year is $130 per adult member. We look forward to your contribution. Join me in thanking God that he has blessed Pastor Robinson with 47 years as he touches lives across the country, around the world, but most of all, especially here at the Olivet Church. Our pastor is truly a gift from the Lord. He is an expression of God's love. Olivet, God gave Pastor Robinson a gift on his birthday, his beloved daughter, Kaylin. Happy birthday, Kaylin. Happy 12th birthday. So family, let's bless the blessings God has placed in our path to lead us to him. No gift is too small because indeed, it's the thought that counts. You can send your expressions of your birthday love to Pastor Robinson by Cash App with dollar sign Dr. William H. Robinson or Zell at rwhrobinson at aol.com or mail checks care of the Olivet Church, P.O. Box 143298, Fayetteville, Georgia 30214. And thank you in advance for your generosity as we celebrate the set man of our house, Pastor William Holmes Robinson. For additional information, please visit our website at theolivetchurch.org. There you can become a member, submit prayer requests, praise reports, find all your information on Bible study, Sunday school worship times for children and adults. You can also sign up for our weekly newsletter and download the Olivet app. Don't forget that all of your Olivet merchandise can be found there as well. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash the Olivet Church. Follow us on Twitter at the Olivet Church. Join us on Instagram, and don't forget to tune in on YouTube. Remember, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24. This is Olivet. Make today awesome. Brothers and sisters, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, church, but I am glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Giving God praise. God is worthy of all the glory, and he is worthy of all of the praise. Every head bowed, every eye closed as we go to God together in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Melt us, mold us, make us, break us, fill us, Lord, and then use us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. And we are the clay. Mold us, make us have thine own way. 
And it's in the marvelous, matchless, and majestic name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And every child of God right where you are said amen, amen, and amen. If you could just give God praise wherever you are on this Sunday morning, this first Sunday in November. God is so worthy to be praised. I believe God has a word for us found this morning in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and we're going to be looking at two verses there Hebrews chapter 11 and we're looking at verses 5 through 7 you find it written in these words it says by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And verse 7 says, By faith Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Amen. I want to talk about this morning for just a few moments, walking by faith amid discouraging times walking by faith amid discouraging times brothers and sisters let me begin by saying that if there is any area that the enemy will try to destroy us in I believe that it's in the area of discouragement I believe that the enemy is just as interested in discouraging us than he is in distracting us. And I say that because Satan knows that if he discourages us, the truth of the matter is so many of us won't even try. As a matter of fact, one example of a distraction is when you are moving forward and you're moving in the right direction and the enemy comes in to try to get you off course and get you off track. However, discouragement is when you don't even have the heart to move at all. Discouragement, brothers and sisters, is when the enemy doesn't have to come in and try to get you off track because you're so discouraged, you're so much in despair until you are no longer on track. Moses felt this way once over in Numbers chapter 11 after dealing with the stress and the strain of trying to lead God's people. Moses became so discouraged one day until he said, God, if I have found favor in your sight, he said, kill me. And you can find that over in Numbers chapter 11, verse number 15. In other words, Moses was saying, I would rather be dead than to keep going through what I'm going through, trying to do your will and trying to walk in your way. I'm talking about discouragement this morning. In fact, this is interesting because most people pray to God for favor to live. For example, when King Hezekiah received the word from the Lord to set your house in order, for you shall surely die. In Isaiah chapter 38, the Bible says, Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. In other words, he asked God to favor him by extending his life. However, Moses, on the other hand, he became so discouraged until he said, listen, favor for me right now is not living, but favor for me is God, you allowing me to die. 
And I'm just trying to paint the picture for you how serious discouragement can be. And the enemy knows that for the child of God, he can't steal our salvation. He know we are saved and we're sealed. He know once we're saved, he can't touch our salvation. He knows he can't do anything about it. But he also knows, well, if I can't get the child of God to go to hell, what I can do is try to discourage them in such a way until they won't fulfill their purpose on earth. I'm talking about discouragement this morning. See, church, that's the whole point of discouragement. It's to keep you and I from reaching our destiny and our full potential here on earth. And I say all the time, how disappointing would it be for us to die and make it to heaven and for God to say, yes, you did well. I'm glad you made it. But there were so many things I intended for you to have on earth, but you never received it because you became so discouraged until you stopped trying. Brothers and sisters, when I examine the life of, of Enoch and and Noah, I can't help but notice that they both have one thing in common. And one thing they have in common in verse 5 and verse 7 is, is that they were both delivered from the trials and tribulations of their world. With Enoch, God took him out of the world. With Noah, God destroyed the world around him would suggest that if you and I are in the midst of a negative situation right now, if you and I are in the midst of a bad circumstance right now, I have some good news for you on this Sunday morning. And the good news is God will either move you or he will move it. But you can rest assured that something is going to move. However, in both cases, the Bible says that these men, Enoch and Noah, found mercy and grace in the sight of God. And it wasn't because I discovered, church, they did anything great or spectacular. It wasn't because they were spiritual superstars. But they found grace in the sight of God because the Bible lets us know that both men walked with God by faith. Both men live by faith. Now, I know this may not seem like much to some of you who are tuning in right now, but in my prayer time lately, in my private and, and meditative moments lately, it has been impressed upon my heart that those of us who will be victorious in this life are not the ones who are perfect, are not the ones who live without struggle, but those who will be victorious are the ones who in the midst of trouble, who in the midst of discouragement and persecution and ridicule, in the midst of family problems and financial problems, they keep walking by faith with God. In other words, they may not be leaping, they may not be scaling tall buildings or mountain peaks like Superman. They may not be making a whole lot of visible or obvious progress, but they are victorious because they keep walking by faith with the Lord. And when you think about it, church, our relationship with God has always been defined as a walk. For example, Romans 6 and 4 says, therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Romans 8 and 1 says, therefore now no condemn condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Galatians 5 and 16 says it this way, I say then, 
walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Isaiah 40, 31, one of my favorite verses says it this way, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. See, understand, church, our relationship with God has always been defined as a walk. In other words, we should constantly be moving towards our goal. And the reality is, all of that, some people fly in life, some people leap, some people run, but most of us on this Christian journey will have to walk. In other words, there are some things we just have to walk it out. So I want to encourage you on this Sunday morning, if you've been saying, Lord, I've been walking for a long time, and it seems like my walking in faith is not paying off, well, I stopped by to tell you on today, keep walking. I'm sure some of you've heard the story of the rabbit and the turtle and how the turtle won the race. And the question was raised, how did the turtle win? Was it because he was faster? No. Was it because he was swifter? No. But he won the race because he never stopped moving. In other words, the rabbit was running circles around the turtle for a long time. And because he was moving so fast and so swiftly, he finally lost interest in the race and sat down to take a nap. But while he was sleeping, the turtle just kept moving. And eventually, the turtle won the race. And I need to tell somebody who's tuning in right now who may feel like the turtle, it may seem like people right now are just passing you by in life. It may look like some people are just running circles around you and you're trying to figure out today, Lord, what am I doing wrong? But I want you to know today that God wants you to keep walking. I know some people, it may look like they're leading the, the race right now. But God sent me here this morning to tell you to keep walking. I know it looks like there are people that are winning right now. Perhaps somebody may have gotten the house that you prayed for. But God said, keep walking. Somebody else may have received the promotion that you wanted. But God said, keep walking. And the reason you have to keep walking by faith is because the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to the one who can endure to the end. And sometimes you just have to tell people, I may not be running, and I may not be leaping, but at least I'm enduring. See, sometimes, church, it's not how well you can start out a race, but sometimes it's how strong you can finish, because the reality is a whole lot of people start out well. However, somewhere along this Christian journey, they fall by the wayside. Somewhere along the journey, they lose heart. Sometimes they do well, but then they fall out on the last lap, and ultimately, they lose the race. See, I discovered it's not how well you start, but it's how strong you finish. In other words, God wants you and I to keep moving. Because if we keep moving, the Bible says the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Now, I need to tell somebody who's tuning in right now that our walking with God is closely connected to the promise that God has for our lives. I say that again. I said our walking with God by faith is closely connected to the promise that God has has for your life and mine's. If you don't believe me, if you look at the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 through 17, it says, And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, he said, Lift your eyes up now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. And verse 15 says, For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And then verse 16 says, And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that 
if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. And then look at verse number 17. It says, arise, walk in the land through its length and width, for I give it to you. I love it. No, notice here in the text that God tells Abraham, he says, listen, I will give you everything that you are looking at. But in order for you to receive it, in order for you to possess it, you have to walk through the land. In other words, God was saying to Abraham, listen, the only thing that can keep you from occupying this land, the only thing that can keep you from seeing the promise realize or actualize in your life, the only thing that can stop you, Abraham, is if you quit walking. As a matter of fact, he told Joshua the same thing in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them the children of Israel. And verse 3 says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. And I need to tell somebody who's tuning in this Sunday morning that God has promised you and I some stuff. He's made a vow concerning you and me. He has a blessing, hear me today, with our name on it. And the only thing that can stop us from receiving that blessing is if we quit walking. See, the enemy knows, Olivet, that he can't steal the promises of God. Because what God has for me, it is for me. Somebody knows today that the promises of God are yes and amen. But then the enemy knows if he can't steal our blessing, he can discourage us to the point that we can stop walking. In other words, he knows if he discourages us to that point, he has won the battle. See, here's the lesson, Olivet. As long as we keep walking, victory is ours. Watch now. We may have to walk through some hardships. We may have to walk through some unpleasant places. We may have to walk through some difficult circumstances. But if we keep walking, we're going to come out on the other side. David said it this way. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley. In other words, David was saying, listen, this is just a temporary assignment I'm going through. And you don't have to be a road scholar to know if you keep on walking through, you're going to come out on the other side. I'm closing, but I need to also tell you that when you keep walking with God, when you keep walking by faith with the Lord, the thing that was intended to hurt you will end up blessing you. And I prove it to you if you look over in the book of Daniel chapter 3, verse number 23. This is the story of the Hebrew boys, and I want you to see how they kept walking when things got hot and heated in their lives. And it says right here in verse 23, and these three men firmly tied fell into the blazing burners. Now understand, church, the goal of the enemy, according to verse 5, was to knock these young men down. The goal of the enemy was to get them off their feet. But I need to tell somebody, keep walking. And look at what it says. Keep walking. Look at what it says in Daniel chapter 3, verses 24 through 25. It says, then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. See, here it is, church. When you keep walking with the Lord, the thing that was designed to hurt you will end up blessing you. 
because remember the enemy threw them in the fire to destroy them. The enemy threw them in the fire to kill them. The enemy threw them in the fire to burn them. But because they kept walking and refused to bow, instead of getting destroyed, the Bible says they received a miracle. And the miracle was God showed up, verse number 25, God showed up in the fire with them. And I want you to see this now. Instead of getting destroyed, all they did was got a little bit closer to the Lord. See, understand, church, when you keep walking by faith with God, what the enemy means for your evil, God will turn it around for your good. As a matter of fact, somebody is going through a fire right now. But if you keep walking, I need you to know today that God is going to show up. See, here it is because they kept walking. The thing that was supposed to destroy them ended up delivering them. And look at verses 24 and 25 again. It says, then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? And they replied, certainly, O king. And verse 25 says, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like the son of God. Now notice verse 24, it says they went in bound. But in verse 25, it says they are walking around loose. In other words, I love it. The three Hebrew boys did not get destroyed in the fire, but the thing that had them tied up got destroyed in the fire. In other words, instead of getting destroyed, the Bible lets us know that they got delivered. And that's what I came to tell somebody on this Sunday morning. When you and I keep walking with the Lord, the thing that was designed to take us out will be the very thing that God will use to take us up. The thing that was designed to kill us will be the very thing that God will use to bless us. The thing that was designed to hurt us will be the very thing that God will use to help us. The thing that was meant to be our setback, if we keep walking with God, God will use it as a setup for a greater comeback. Now, this is what I love, church, and I'm finished about God. God is so good that he could have delivered the three Hebrew boys from the fire. He could have just said, you know what? I don't even want you all to go through it because the truth of the matter is there have been some things that God just saved you and I from, meaning he didn't even allow us to go through it. In other words, he says, you don't even have to go through this fire. But then there are some fires, church, that God allows us to walk in and he allows us to walk in them just to show us that I'm just as good in the fire as I am in keeping you out of the fire. In other words, God says, I just won't deliver you from it, but then I can turn around and deliver you in it. And I'm talking to somebody on this Sunday morning because we serve a God that says, yes, I'm a God that can keep you from having cancer, but I'm also a God that can heal you even if you get cancer. Yes, I'm a God that can keep you from losing your job, but I'm also a God that can supply all of your needs even after you've lost your job. Yes, I'm a God that can save your marriage, but I'm also a God that can keep you and sustain you and preserve you even if you've lost your marriage. In other words, God says, I can save you from it, but then I can turn right back around and save you in it. In other words, God says, listen, I may not always put an air conditioner in the fire for you, but guess what? I can make you fireproof. Well, the question is, what hallmark Enoch and Noah and all of the rest here in Hebrews chapter 11 was it because they were perfect no was it because they never made any mistakes no 
But the thing that made them special was that they kept walking with God by faith. They never gave up. And I need to tell somebody on this Sunday morning, no matter how bad your situation is, keep walking with God. No matter how bad you think you've messed up, I want to encourage you today, keep walking with God. The only thing that God expects you and I to do is just keep walking by faith with him. The songwriter said it this way, walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. Sing it in your home. Yeah. Walk in the light, beautiful light, from where the dew drops. The mercy shine bright, shine all around us, by day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. Let's say it one more time. Then we'll walk in the light, beautiful light. From where the dew drops, a mercy shine bright, shine all around us, shine by day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. Do you know that Jesus is the light of the world? He said, "I am the light." Jesus is the light. Even if you're in darkness, he'll shine in your life. Jesus is the light. Yeah. Jesus is the light of the world. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to commune this morning, Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed we are delivered and we're set free on today where would we be if christ had not died on that cross somebody said that he could have called on ten thousand angels but he never said a mumbling word he stayed there for you and he stayed there for me. And I'm so glad that Jesus got up on Calvary's cross. I'm so glad he died and he was resurrected so that we could have a life and have it more abundantly. On the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus was betrayed, the Bible says that he took the bread and he blessed it and broke it and then he gave it to his disciples and he said take eat the all of it and in the same manner he took the cup said this is my blood which is shed for the remission of sins that represents the new covenant that I leave with you take drink ye all of it He said, as often as you eat of this body and drink of this cup, you show the Lord's death until he comes. He says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Oh, it's Jesus. Oh, it's Jesus.
Jesus. Jesus. In my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment, his blood has made me whole. I've tried all I could, seemed like nothing. Passing by, then I decided to give him a try. Oh, it is Jesus! Oh, it is Jesus! Jesus in my soul. For I have touched him. Garment and his blood has made me whole. I played one time. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver, and we know that a cheerful giver loves God. Let me take this moment to thank you, Olivet, those members who give faithfully and consistently each and every week to this ministry. I want you to know that you are the lifeblood of this church and this ministry. We could not do what we do, cutting edge ministry. We could not do relevant ministry if it weren't for your generous contributions. So I want to just take this moment to thank you and praise God for you as we prepare to give together. Lord, empower me to bless your kingdom. I love you, Lord, and I support the vision and the visionary of this house. I will give cheerfully and not begrudgingly. All I have belongs to you. I will honor you with the first fruits. I will be a faithful and committed tither. The devourer is rebuked off my life. Lord, we have built you a house, blessed and bountiful in Jesus' name. Amen. Nehemiah 12, 43 and 44. And on that day they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. The sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. At that time, the men were appointed to be in charge of the storerooms for the contributions, first fruits, and tithes. From the fields around the towns, they were to bring into the storeroom the portions required by law for the priests and the Levites. For Judah was pleased with the ministering priests and Levites. Good day, and thank you for joining us. 
We are now in the last quarter of the year, and scripture reminds us to remain vigilant in our giving. All of that, we are so grateful for your faithfulness. And while you've not been able to come in to bring your tithes and offerings like the townspeople in the scripture, you've been committed to giving. Thank you for your generosity and support. All of that, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Have a great week. Be safe, be blessed, and be well. To use PushPay, text Olivet Give to seven seven nine seven seven and follow the prompts. And don't forget to download the Olivet My Church app, available on Android and iPhone. We're getting ready to go, Olivet, but I want to just take this moment to say. I am excited about November 21st, our 30th church anniversary and our reopening. Listen, God has been so good to us. He has blessed us in these past 30 years. Can you believe that we are 30 years old? God has been so kind to us and we're going to come and celebrate together on the third Sunday I'm looking forward to seeing each and every one of you. I'm looking forward to just being able to, to love on you and we love on each other as we continue to social distance. And I'm just excited about what God is going to do in that service. God has given me a special message for that Sunday and I'm looking forward to preaching it. Also, let me take a moment to say thank you, Olivet for how you bless both Kaylin and I on our birthday, November the 3rd. I want you to know that we love you. We thank God for you. You don't know the cards, the well wishes, the text messages, all of those things. You don't know how much that meant to both me and my daughter. God gave me one of the best gifts he could give me on my birthday. He allowed my daughter Kaylin to be born on her father's birthday. And I want you to know that as usual, you all made our day special. And we love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Remember, I still see you in your future and you're looking much better than you're looking right now. As we prepare to go to God together, every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, we thank you on today for all that our eyes have seen. We thank you for what our ears have heard. We thank you, Lord, for what our hearts have felt. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that rests, rules, and abides within us and within this place. Now to him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. And every child of God, right where you are, said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.
join me in thanking God that he has blessed Pastor Robinson with 47 years as he touches lives across the country, around the world, but most of all, especially here at the Olivet Church. Our pastor is truly a gift from the Lord. He is an expression of God's love. Olivet, God gave Pastor Robinson a gift on his birthday, his beloved daughter, Kaylin. Happy birthday, Kaylin. Happy 12th birthday. So, family, let's bless the blessings God has placed in our path to lead us to him. No gift is too small because, indeed, it's the thought that counts. You can send your expressions of your birthday love to Pastor Robinson by Cash App with dollar sign Dr. William H. Robinson or Zell at rwhrobinson at aol.com or mail checks care of the Olivet Church, P.O. Box 143298, Fayetteville, Georgia 30214. And thank you in advance for your generosity as we celebrate the set man of our house, Pastor William Holmes Robinson. For additional information, please visit our website at theolivetchurch.org. There you can become a member, submit prayer requests, praise reports, find all your information on Bible study, Sunday school worship times for children and adults. You can also sign up for our weekly newsletter and download the Olivet app. Don't forget that all of your Olivet merchandise can be found there as well. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash the Olivet Church. Follow us on Twitter at the Olivet Church. Join us on Instagram, and don't forget to tune in on YouTube. Remember, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24. This is Olivet. Make today awesome. <laughs>